spinal cord uh, segment cross section. All right, so I'm going to take one of those 31 segments of spine out. Okay, and it's going to look something like this. Not exactly like that, but, uh, you know, pretty damn close. So this is sort of a, a coin, a thickened coin, and one of those spinal cord segments that come out. You're going to see this structure on the inside. This is going to be a cross-section of gray matter. Okay? This is where your cell bodies are going to uh, reside. And it's going to run the thickness of... So this structure runs all the way through, right? The thickness of this uh, chunk, this coin, right? So the, uh, the gray matter's in the inside, and we know the gray matter is the uh, dendrites and cell bodies, and it's surrounded by uh, three columns on the right and left, three columns of white matter. There's the lateral white column, the anterior white column, and the posterior white column, sometimes called ventral white and dorsal white uh, columns as well and then the uh, lateral white column. Your white column is composed of, since, since they're uh, white matter, is composed of myelinated axons and such that make up the bulk of the spinal cord relaying information to the brain and from the brain. Uh, for clinical purposes, it's good to know at least a few areas of the white matter that correspond with some of the information that's being taken up to the brain. So a couple of your ascending uh, columns that you'll want to know right away are going to be in your dorsal column. Of course, there's corresponding over here on the, the right side. I'm just drawing the left. This is going to be your fasciculus gracilis. We know gracilis means long and slender. This is going to convey information, vibration, touch, pressure from the lower limb all the way up to the brain. And then joining in at higher spinal levels, you're going to have your two, your fasciculus cuneatus. Uh, cuneatus because it's kind of wedge-shaped like the cuneiform writing of ancient uh, Sumerians. At least I think that's why it's named that. This is going to carry information, vibration, touch, discriminatory touch pressure up to your brain from the uh, upper limbs and such. We'll get into the uh, the long tracks ascending and descending and their, their pathways through the spine, their levels of decussation and such uh, in another video. Uh, another track that's going to ascend is going to be over here and include a large portion of the anterolateral uh, part of the white matter. And this is the anterolateral system. It's going to contain uh, spinotectal, spinocerebellar, um, spinal bulbar, lots of things in here. But mainly it's going to contain the spinal thalamic tract, right? Spinal thalamic tract be your pain and temperature sensation that gets conveyed up to the brain. Uh, just as a matter of fact here, the fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus are known collectively as the DCML, dorsal column medial lumniscus. The medial lumniscus portion is brainstem. We'll get to that in a different video when we do ascending long tracks. Uh, but that takes up a big chunk of white matter on the lateral column. Another big chunk of white matter is taken up with the lateral corticospinal tract. And then another little piece down here in the anterior portion called the anterior corticospinal tract. The corticospinal tract is descending uh, long tract, and that's your motor information coming down from your brain. Uh, lateral corticospinal tract will contain most of the fibers from the opposite side of the brain, and the anterior corticospinal tract will contain another 10% that are non-decussated or uncrossed uh, fibers, and we'll get into those in another video. So that's kind of some white matter. When you get into your gray matter, okay, you're going to have some little cell bodies that live in this ventral horn, this little alpha motor uh, cell body, and we'll talk about uh, gamma motors and such later. They're organized in this, this horn, uh, flexors and extensor muscles are separated uh, or organized, and the um, proximal and distal muscles are organized, very organized. And these little axons, or sorry, neurons, sit all through the thickness of this structure, and their little projections leave the side of this chunk or segment of spine as little ventral rootlets, or motor rootlets, right? Rootlets. The rootlets are going to join or coalesce, converge into a root, 
a ventral root, and the ventral root is going to join the dorsal root. So they're going to kind of come together into a ventral root, and it's going to join with a dorsal root, which has this large swelling in it before it enters the spinal cord. This large swelling is called the dorsal root ganglion. Ganglion being a collection of gray matter. Uh, this is where sensory cell bodies are going to live. All right, sensory cell bodies are going to live back here. Okay. The posterior horn inside the, uh, the interior of the spinal cord is much more narrow because it doesn't contain cell bodies. It's just going to contain axons and some dendrites and interneurons as they come in. And then synapse uh, or uh, convey themselves into these ascending tracts like the spinal thalamic. You'll come in through the, say, the substantia gelatinosa, cross over to the spinal thalamic and then ascend to the brain. Or come in, jump into the DCML, ascend to the brainstem, then decussate, um, and then move up to the brain. So the sensory lives in the dorsal half of the spine and into the spinal cord. Motor comes out of the front. Right? So the spinal nerve, we've got mixed traffic. Okay? You've got motor commands headed out, and you've got sensory information, which I'll make blue, headed in. Sensory information comes in from the peripheral process to the sensory neuron, then sends a central process in, and then uh, something happens, either a sensor to the brain or uh, synapses in a, a reflex arc with one of the motor neurons, and we'll cover those uh, reflexes in another video. Motor out the front, sensory in the back, spinal nerve, and the mixed spinal nerve becomes spinal nerve right here at about the level of the interventricular foramen. The interventricular foramen. The um, intermedial lateral cell column, the IML here is going to contain ANS sympathetic neurons, which will send their axons out through the ventral uh, root. And then you're going to have this extra little stop for them, where'd my line go? It's going to come into this paravertebral or sympathetic chain ganglion, right, through this gray ramus, and then it's going to synapse on the postganglionic fiber, which will come up through the white uh, rami communicantes and then back out, joining the spinal nerve. We'll talk about that ANS pre and postganglionics in another video. Uh, I think that's it for spinal cord cross section.